Hey everyone and welcome to another deep dive. Today we're going to explore a question that's really got me thinking lately. Um, can one person, just one, with you know their own ingenuity and a bit of help from technology, redefine what it means to be a musician in our digital world? Hmm. That's a big question. It is. And that's exactly what we're going to unpack today as we take a deep dive into the world of, well, the Bass Loopman. You know, what I find so fascinating about the Bass Loopman is that he's creating these really intricate, full soundscapes, not with a band and not with an orchestra, but basically with basses. And, well, a whole lot of looping technology. Okay, hold on, hold on. Three basses to be exact. Right? Yeah, three basses. And no guitars. We have to dig into this looping magic a bit. Imagine you start with nothing. And then, boom, you have a finished piece of music in just a few hours. It's incredible, isn't it? It really is. And that's what the Bass Loopman is doing. So for our listeners who might not be familiar with looping, can you break it down for us a bit? Absolutely. Imagine you record yourself playing a bass line, right? Then you hit a button, and that line plays on repeat. Now your hands are free, so you layer another bass line on top of that, and then another and another. All of this is happening live in real time. You're essentially building a sonic tapestry one thread at a time. So not only is he a crazy talented musician, but he's like a live sound engineer at the same time. Precisely. It takes real technical mastery to pull off looping effectively. Think about it. You're orchestrating an entire song on the fly, managing all those loops and making sure it all sounds musically cohesive. It's not just about hitting the right notes. It's about timing, layering, building those sounds into something that truly captivates the listener. I read that he uses a very specific tuning setup for his basses, like B, A, and E tuning. What's the deal with that? How does that even work? Yeah, that's a great catch. It's actually a really smart way for him to expand his sonic palette. Most bassists, they stick to the standard tuning, which gives them a certain range of notes, right? But by tuning his three basses differently, he's essentially widening that range. He has access to this much broader spectrum of low-end frequencies, and that opens up a whole world of melodic possibilities. Wow, so he's basically hacking the bass guitar like turning it into this multifaceted instrument. Exactly. It's really amazing, you know, seeing how he pushes those technical boundaries. But it's obvious from everything we've read that the Bass Lubman is super grounded in it, like the traditions of rock music. Oh, absolutely. He said himself that his biggest influences are progressive rock and alternative rock. And get this, he actually weaves those influences directly into his music in a really unique way. Wait, what do you mean? How so? He actually uses lyrics, like real lyrics from bands that he's a fan of, right, in his own work. Oh, wow. That's really cool. So he's not just, like, drawing inspiration. He's incorporating these pieces of musical history. Exactly. He takes those familiar lyrics, you know, and puts them into this whole new soundscape. It's fascinating how he does it. For someone like me who, you know, maybe hasn't explored those genres as much could you give me a quick rundown of what those influences sound like? Sure. Imagine progressive rock as this, like, adventurous cousin of mm. classic rock, right? It's all about these complex song structures, weird time signatures, and just crazy good musicianship. Think, like, Rush or um, Yes. And then there's alternative rock, which came about in the 80s. It was this kind of rebellion against what was considered mainstream. And, you know, it's a real mix of genres, often combining punk, pop, even some experimental stuff. Interesting. So he's pulling from these really rich traditions, but making them completely his own at the same time. It's like a musical conversation, you know, across different generations. Yeah. And speaking of conversations, his work with K.Alien, that collaboration is so interesting. Have you ever heard of a musical duo who basically met and started making music together, yeah. like entirely on Instagram? It's amazing, right? A perfect example of how technology is completely changing the game for musicians. These two, they weren't established artists with record deals. They connected through social media, purely on their love of creating. Like a modern day version of like jamming in a garage, but the garage is, you know, the internet. Exactly. And they were sending musical ideas back and forth, recordings, you know, all through Instagram posts and smartphone audio. And during a pandemic, no less, wow. it shows you how accessible things are becoming. You don't need some fancy recording studio or a big time producer to collaborate and create. You just need the inspiration and the drive to share your work. That's inspiring. And it's not just about making music either, right? The, yeah. the Bass Lutman, he scored that horror short, Cubby Hill. And I was thinking, like, in horror, sound is so important for setting the mood. Oh, absolutely. Building that suspense, that tension, it's all about the sound. And the way loop-based music can be so atmospheric, almost eerie at times, 
it's perfect for horror. You know, we can't talk about the Bass Lutman without talking about artificial intelligence. I mean, it's like this whole other layer to his music. Absolutely. And it's definitely causing a stir in the music world, right? And this whole idea of AI and creativity. The Bass Lutman has been using this app, kits.ai, and it's pretty wild. Basically, you feed it a bunch of music and it analyzes it all, like really digs into the data. And then it can actually generate new melodies, harmonies, even lyrical ideas. Like having a digital songwriting partner, can you imagine? Oh, hold on. It can do all that. I mean, how does that even work? So let's say he wants to come up with a new melody, right? He can feed Kits.ai a bunch of music he likes, could be some progressive rock, maybe some alternative stuff, even some of his own loops. And the AI goes to work. It analyzes all those tracks, finds patterns, structures, and then based on all that, it gives him a bunch of melodic ideas. Not like finished songs, but definitely starting points. So it's not like composing for him. It's more like giving him these musical building blocks. Exactly. A tool for inspiration, maybe to get over writer's block or even discover something totally new he wouldn't have thought of otherwise. It all comes back to that question we started with, right? What does it even mean to be a musician today? It feels like the Bass Loopman is showing us there's a new path here. Yeah. It's not about rejecting the old ways. It's about using everything we have. He's definitely pushing boundaries, that's for sure. I mean, think about it. He's drawing on the history of rock music, yeah. taking those influences, then using looping, AI, all this modern technology to create something totally new. And it's not just him alone in his studio, right? It's like he's yeah. part of this huge interconnected web of music and technology. And that's what makes the Bass Loop Men so fascinating to me. He's a musician, yeah, but he's also this tech-savvy innovator, a collaborator, even a curator in a way, bringing all these different pieces together. It really makes you think, what else is out there? What other possibilities haven't even been explored yet? That's the perfect question for our listeners to ponder as they, you know, dive into the Bass Lupin's music themselves. How can you take what you're passionate about, mix it with technology, experiment, and create something new and exciting? How can you be a part of this evolving conversation that is music? Thanks for joining us for this deep dive, everyone. Until next time.